What am I doing here? This is the fig tree and the pygmy people actually use this as a cemetery tree where they, they used to bury their, their young here in the roots. Holy Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, you're wondering what happened to Gary Coleman. Today we spent the day in the Batwa village where the pygmies live. Those were pygmies? They seem kind of big for pygmies. I expected something a little more oompa loompy. You will live in happiness too. Well, thanks to good diet and nutrition, they're as tall as anybody else now. Wow. Well, thanks to good diet and nutrition, Jack Black is now skinny and not funny at all. I miss this beautiful wild ginger, which I love, and we're invited to taste some. That's great. <laughs> she likes it. He's showing us a medicine that he gets from the bark of this tree. And we're going to try some of it. All right, so you chew this. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you eat this? Good joys of Kulicho water cooling. It's Viagra. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm sure you all remember Famous Amos and his great chocolate chip cookies, but not everyone knows about his brother, unknown Jerome. <laughs> Jerome decided that Americans would want to eat healthy and try more salads and less cookies, and as a result, he went broke and lives in a house made of mud and sticks. Isn't that right, Jerome? It's a beautiful place. I wish you a lot of luck. And by the way, Pharrell called. He wants his hat back. <laughs> Actually, that man was the village doctor. He was the local healer. He takes the plants in this area and makes them into medicine to help the people who are sick. This is my mother's dream come true. I finally become a doctor. The Batwa village provides a wide range of handmade crafts. They've got beads and baskets and cell phones. Holy cow, they got cell phones. Hello, hello. <laughs> cheap Samsung piece of crap. And the pygmy people live in houses of straw. Some are made of sticks. And some pygmies live in houses of brick. Little pygmies, little pygmies, let me in, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll <laughs> blow your house in. That's the joke. <laughs> what do you know, it worked. <laughs> Here's a method of trap that the pygmies practice, which they learned from uh, Wile E. Coyote cartoons. This is what's become of Steve Harvey since the Miss Universe pageant. And that was the little pygmy players in a very loose adaptation of Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> this is our hotel for the night. I can't believe this got three stars on TripAdvisor. African gas station toilet. Four words that conjure cleanliness and comfort. And here's maybe one of the best we've seen. It's got all the bells and whistles. Toilet paper. A lid on the toilet. And even running water. Folks. I feel like I'm at the Ritz. Alright, I'm looking for the car, hon. I can't find it. I know we parked by a tree. That's not much help in Africa. And oh, here it is. Oh, thank God. Oh, here's our driver. Oh, it's good. Hey, they washed it. You know the sad part? That was the best parallel parking job I ever did. We'll get back in the luggage. We're sending you home to Madonna. Some different places uh, with uh, like uh, 20 hives in each location to avoid those rangos and it has helped because uh, as time for harvesting comes, uh, the harvested honey is sold to uh, volcano safaris. Do you know what he said, Mike? Hey? Yes, yeah, I think he said, he said he had 40 beehives 
or maybe farty behind. Okay. Welcome to the jungle. going to be a real boy. We're about to enter the torture chamber built by Idi Amin in 1972 and used as a place of misery from 1973 to 1979 by him. It looks pretty ominous. I don't know what I'm going to see inside. What? I'm not going to joke about that. I'm, I'm not a monster. So this is it. This was Idi Amin's electric torture chamber. When Idi Amin wanted them tortured, if he wanted information, they would be brought out and electrified in the water. And many people died here. It was horrible. And people didn't really know what was going on here, where this torture was taking place, or if it was taking place. It's a very, very horrible thing. While it's no longer a torture chamber, they still occasionally show John Cusack movies here. All right, I am a monster. Always remember, kids, yeah. take candy from strangers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you get one? Thank you. And can you look at the camera? Say hi. <laughs> Say hi to America. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Did you get one? <laughs> you got one. You buddy. got one. Here you go. Well, here's one. Here. Here. <laughs> Mike is making a brick. Okay. Let me see the hands. Oh. So here's the pile of, of uh, clay. It have to be flat. Uh -huh. oh. Like 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 the way yeah. this guy do. Yes. What the? It's my first brick. <laughs> yes. These are bricks. I I came here. You can see I made that one. I made that one too when I got the bill for this trip. <laughs> all I can say, in the words of Pink Floyd, all in all, another brick in the wall. Uh, and I'd li like to say officially, I am the first Jew to make a brick since Moses freed the slaves. <laughs> After a hard day of making one brick, nothing satisfies like a nice banana beer. And the banana beer I drink is Splits, the beer that made Rwanda famous. Well, that and the genocide, too. Do you remember the movie Gorillas in the Mist? Oh, yeah. No. You know, Sigourney Weaver plays a woman living in the jungle, protecting the wildlife. I believe that was called Avatar. No, she played Diane Fossey. She lived in the jungles protecting the mountain gorilla. And today, I want to climb a mountain to visit her grave. You do that. 
I'm on vacation. Hello, Mike. Hi, everyone. I am hiking on my way to see Diane Fossey's grave and where she did all her research with the mountain gorillas. And it's a, a beautiful but horrible muddy hike. This is uh, the kind of stuff I've been doing. There are uh, three or four men helping me and no one else along the road. There's a porter, two army and a guide. So this is what it's all about. I'm not there yet. I've been hiking for a couple of hours. I hope I, I get there and I don't sink in this mud. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? Today is the 30th anniversary of Diane Fossey's death. Some poachers came into her tent and killed her with a machete. So I want to pay tribute to her and the great things she has done in saving these mountain gorillas. This is my idea of paradise. <laughs> They're coming home with me. Anyway, what makes me comfortable is knowing this will never wind up on Facebook. It's jungle out there. I'm here at Diane Fossey's grave, and I'm very proud to be here. She lived on this mountain for 20 years, uh, observing the gorillas and protecting them, not letting poachers come in, not letting cows come in to take over the land. Uh, so she's a remarkable person, and she really accomplished something amazing. She, she saved these gorillas, and today people come to see them all the time. Oh, hello. I didn't see you come in. Well, while Denise is climbing a mountain in the mud, I'm grappling with a challenge just as big. Sudoku. <laughs> and if you've seen the movie Gorillas in the Mist, you'll remember uh, Digit, who was a very important gorilla to her. And she buried all her gorillas here. Um, it's a very moving place to be. Diane was born the same year as my mother, so I wish she were still here. I wish Diane could, could see what she's accomplished. I didn't know you were still here. Well, this is how every trip finishes. They put you in some place really nice right at the end, and you forget what a horrible time you had the past couple of weeks. I got a patio, I got a chaise, and I got the Nile right here by my side. We're going river rafting on it tomorrow. What? So that was our trip to the jungles of Rwanda. It was difficult, sometimes painful, but it was really worth it. It was like natural childbirth. Yeah, but if we do it again, I'm gonna want drugs. Lots of drugs. Right, kids? Yeah. You know where I'd really like to go next? No. <laughs> Tunisia. Tunisia, why? Well, we can visit all the locations where they shot Star Wars. Star Wars? Let's go! Yeah!